So about three weeks ago now, there was a train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. I'm sure most of you are familiar. A lot of you have asked me to talk about it. East Palestine sounds like some Middle Eastern hellhole. And if it wasn't before, I guess now it is <laughs> with all the pollution and crap that's been going on. The railroad is owned by Norfolk Southern and it was actually rumored that the company was behind and slacking on track maintenance to save money. So there's this like idea that the company is trying to cut corners and make a lot of profit that's been kind of established. If you're from East Palestine and you're watching this and you have family there maybe, maybe you're like not from East Palestine but you're associated with it with one of your relatives, watch until the end because I will explain from a legal perspective what can hypothetically be done. So the train was carrying millions of pounds of toxic materials which were ignited in the derailment. Then the National Guard burned holes in the train cars to burn the rest. And there was actually a tweet from someone stating that the CDC updated their profile for vinyl chloride 11 days before the train crash. So you know, as with everything else in the news for the most part, it wouldn't be surprised if this was a planned event as opposed to something seen as an accident. The main thing is, if they didn't want us to know this happened, we wouldn't. You know, they control all of the social media platforms and if something secretive actually happened, it would never make the news. You know, they would sweep it under the rug, maybe mention it briefly, not have it plastered all over all mainstream news sources at like the very top for weeks on end. You know, there was tons of coverage on Twitter with various dramatic news articles and even on TikTok, cattle dying, you know, transporting the cars in the dead of night, doing sneaky stuff, toxic chemicals leaching into the groundwater. And even now, a few weeks after this happened, they're still shipping toxic waste containers to certain parts of Ohio to be dumped. The point is, it's very well known by everyone, by the general public, that this town in Ohio and the Ohio River has been heavily polluted. It's by no extent a secret. There was no effort in covering it up whatsoever, unlike past events such as you know, Fukushima, where the radiation in the fish concern is still being swept under the rug, or even 9-11 when the first responders were shunned for years and years until most of them died and couldn't even collect the money or their families couldn't. So whether this was accidental or intentional, I can only speculate. But as with any story that ends up in the news, there are some very sketchy and questionable parts of it. <laughs> the, the one thing that still gets me is they, they had that shooting in the New York uh, subway. I think it was in Brooklyn. Uh, I can't remember if it was in Brooklyn or Queens like a few months ago, and not one security camera was working, and not one person had any phone evidence of the shooting whatsoever in New York City. How likely is that in 2023? Let's be honest. One theory I had is that they're simply trying to make people sick. You know, we know all these big companies are owned by the parasitic elite, and when people are sick, they benefit. BlackRock, one of the biggest financial investment managers, owns most of Norfolk Southern, the company that has caused this derailment due to their negligence. Now this Ohio River, where the pollution was allegedly dumped, runs east to west from the western end of Pennsylvania, the very end of PA, down to the corner of like Arkansas, Tennessee, and Missouri. Those three states kind of meet at the end of the Ohio River. And a lot of those states, ironically, being ones with the lowest injection rates, people that got jabbed. So, you know, if the government is not going to poison you one way, is the government going to poison you a different way? Kind of fishy, kind of fishy. So a lot of you have expressed concerns about pollution in the food supply. I've gotten a few emails, uh, the water supply. And, you know, certainly those areas in Ohio and along the Ohio River should be concerned about this. We know those bodies of water and areas for sure 
are filled with toxins, you know, regardless of how bad it is, we, we don't want food sourced from there. What I'm not sure about is how far these gases traveled in the clouds, how far the wind took them. I, I don't really think it's a, I don't think that's a legitimate concern. It's only rained a few days in Pennsylvania the entire month of February and a little bit in New York. And that rain happened like two and a half weeks after the train crash. So I would be most concerned about the water sources in that area, East Palestine, Ohio, for like a dozen or two square miles. And then anyone that has the Ohio River as a source of water. And this is speculation. The government knows for sure the truth about how bad things are, but they would never reveal that to the general public. You know, it's, it's like a damage control thing. I forgot to take my jacket off, so I guess I might as well. And I've been involved in one too many lawsuits as a young man <laughs> trying to start his own business. The people of East Palestine have not been compensated for anything as far as I know, not even for you know temporary emergency relocation, let alone their full property value for their now worthless homes. A company as wealthy and powerful as BlackRock, you know, just means that anyone involved is going to be paid off, whether it's the government, officials, lawyers, judges, or any sort of regulating body that the people can go to help for. And these average people don't have the legal knowledge of what needs to be done, you know, if the lawyers aren't coming to help them, because obviously the lawyers want to get paid themselves. Who to go after is the bigger question. I, I think they have to include every single entity involved in the situation, you know, Norfolk Southern, EPA, FBI, National Guard, whatever government agencies are in, the docket should look like, you know, the people of East Palestine as the plaintiff versus, and then listing all of those agencies. And it doesn't need to be a crazy write-up. You know, it would only take several hours to gather enough evidence to just have a basic complaint, you know, the obvious neglect of the rail company, the hiding of the facts, the types of chemicals by the EPA, you know, the National Guard's questionable immediate action. And then you would file that initial complaint, um, send it overnight to all of those agencies. And then 24 hours from the filing of the complaint, from the time that you send the complaint overnight to all of those places, that's when you can file an emergency motion. It's called um, order to show cause. And then you can include some more details in that, basically explaining immediate action needs to be taken in order to prevent irreparable damage. So this would be much longer. You know, you go into more detail. You would have exhibits and examples of what happened. And for a lawyer to legitimately do this, it probably cost dozens of thousands, if not over $100,000, um, because they would include a lot of details that the, uh, the average person, you know, from a legal knowledge perspective is not going to have. And that might be an issue because the legal system is complete BS. You know, a big part of these proceedings is past cases and actions, which is something that, you know, takes years and years of being an actual lawyer. You know, like you're referencing, oh, well, in this one case from 1989, the judge said that the pollution was at fault of this agent. So obviously the average person is not going to know that off the top of their head. There's lawyers that specialize in these areas. You know, and there's also going to be dozens of things in the lawsuit that the opposing lawyers from these big companies will just poke holes in, you know, from the legal law perspective or the specifics of how the proceeding's supposed to be done, how the filing's supposed to be. That is if everyone wasn't paid off in the first place. If there was any legitimacy whatsoever to the legal system, this type of complaint and emergency motion would immediately be granted and they could literally just take any sort of liquid assets from those companies, lean them against the banks, have the banks pay the people. But generally what happens is all of these people are in the club, the lawyers, the judges, the government agencies, Everyone is in on it. So instead of being like a normal person, a normal human being, and being logical and reasonable, and reading the complaint and saying, okay, this is obviously bad and these people need money, they're going to 
say some legal loophole bullshit and disregard everything. And that's their way of, you know, kind of screwing everyone over. When they, when they go to those legal specifics and that stuff and they're pretending that, oh, the, the, the case wasn't filed properly or there's legal loopholes or we have to do this or we have to do that, that's basically them just saying, um, yeah, we got paid off, but we don't want to tell you that, so we're going to pretend and make up rules along the way and screw you over, which you know, on a lesser extent is what have, has happened to me in all of my lawsuits. Um, so, you know, it's, if there's money in it for these lawyers, I don't know. I think they're, they're just going to get paid off. So it's, it's really, you know, you file this, you see what happens and, and hope for the best because if they are getting paid off and the lawyers didn't want to help you in the first place, then when you go to actually file this in court, they're just going to dismiss it based off some BS. And then all you can really do is make it as public as possible. Tell people, take it to the media try to make a big stink of it, but again, they control everything. So it's really, who knows how much of this is true or not. I just want to give you guys my two cents. But uh, you guys can go to frank if you would like to support me through all of my businesses before I uh, disappear to a beach somewhere, which is looking more and more likely. Uh, so you guys can drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and make sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. I'll see you guys soon.